Deborah Peters, International Business Accelerator at Neural Engineering Institute, is the global leader in how to scale up your business, your relationships, yourself, and your life. Her unique combination of mindset tools based in neuroscience and her vast experience in business acceleration and peak performance enable you and your company to scale personally and professionally. I am so thrilled to be doing this once again with you and for you. I have a new co-host and I'm absolutely delighted to introduce him to you today. And we are going to be having a lot of fun with this because just in the last five minutes of even setting up the technology, we've been hysterically laughing. So um, very excited to work with uh, Richard. And um, why don't you say hi, Richard, Daniel Curtis from Southampton, the United Kingdom, and tell us a little bit about you. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for that introduction. Um, so um, for those guys who haven't heard of me, um, I'm a behavior expert. Um, I'm very much um, based in um, Britain. I'm very, very English, I'm afraid to say, or very proud to say, I should say. Um, and my passion is all about helping people to understand behavior, whether it's understanding psychology, whether it's understanding neuroscience, whether it's understanding what's happening inside your body, doesn't make any difference to me. It's all about helping people to understand behavior. I'm known as the kid comer. I've done a lot of work with children and certainly over the years, um, they say that I've influenced somewhere over half a million children's lives in, in, the, in the work that I've done. I've written, oh, Deborah will tell you, I've written loads of books and um, probably spent it's far too much I aspire time. to write as many books as you. <laughs> far too much time writing in front of a computer when actually I should, sometimes I just think you should be out there living life. But there's so many things in my brain that I just want to share with everyone. Absolutely. And so I think that's a great segue. Um, this new series is called Journey of the Mastery of Your Mind. And I did talk about it on some previous episodes of my podcast. I just uh, wasn't the right time for me to get it off the ground. Um, but now this is the right time and this is the right co-host to do this with. And how this came to pass is um, Richard and I were doing a Skype meeting, what, like a, not even a, like a few days ago, right? Within the last yeah, week. And, was, um, four days ago at most. Yeah, and, and you know we were sharing things um, as colleagues do, as peers do. and. And uh, we both went, oh my God, that would make an amazing blog. We just have to do this. And I'm like, well, interesting that you should say that because I've uh, just kind of put it out to the universe that I was looking for a new co-host and um, I had just like let it go. Like, okay, I need a new co-host and I'm not moving forward on this podcast until that right person shows up. And so here we are. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about the journey of the mastery of your mind. And that comes from the premise that no matter what you're doing, whether it's running your company or parenting children or, uh, you know, in your marriage, your relationship, like your colleagues at the water cooler at the office, whatever it is, the bottom line is this is all about you. And so who anybody has come into your life and said, it ain't about you, they don't know what they're talking about because it's always about you. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I so agree with you. I, it's I, I, about you. Ab absolutely. It's, it's, I mean, it's something that, 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 Deborah, you know that I'm so passionate about because actually the book that I'm writing at the moment um, it, you know, is, is the I method because it is, it's always comes back to us. It always comes back to our experience of being in that moment is, is what influences our perception of other people and influences the world around us. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you, I had a really huge epiphany on this about uh, whew, like 10, 12 years ago when my brother-in-law passed and I went home and, you know, everyone was at my sister's house and friends and family and, you know, everybody's in mourning and, 
And I can't remember exactly how the conversation got going, but there was a point made where this isn't about us. This is about, his name was Ralph. This is about Ralph. And I went, no, it's not. Ralph's exited. This is about us. So whatever, you know, is being triggered within each one of us and how we're managing that in a group dynamic and how we're managing it individually is all about me. And so where I want to take this podcast, if I could just set an intention, um, is where I want to take this podcast is that through my journey, through your journey, Richard, through how we interact with each other and, and bounce back and forth um, ideas and tools and concepts and to be able to do that for the listeners because the I think probably the biggest uh, misconception is that a coach or a trainer is perfect and that you don't have any challenges in your life and your life all looks good. Oh, well, you're the coach. You're the one that knows everything. So therefore, everything has to be good for you. And it's like, hell no, it couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I think we probably go through more um, deep life experiences as coaches and trainers uh, because then we've, we have to be able to come from that place of living that experience and getting to the other side of it Definitely. and all of the journey in between and how that, how that expands our consciousness um, that we want to bring to the table for you. And that's the whole point to this. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, um, one, of, one of the things that, 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 one of the things that I do is a lot of, of talking and training about mentoring. In fact, actually my company is, is the mentoring school. And in order to be a mentor, it's, you know, you need to be someone who's experienced in that journey, who's had, you know, who has previously overcome those difficulties or has experienced those difficulties. Because actually the big thing is, and this is a huge difference between coaching and mentoring, is that actually with a mentor, it's all about you've experienced that. You're using your experience. You're using your guiding hand to support someone, to advise someone through that process so that actually they can learn from your wisdom. They can learn from the things that have happened in your life and actually just make, just make that difference for them. Well, okay, so I know it's, many times it's probably going to be just a play on words or semantics but because we're at the end of the day we're both saying the same thing. Um, but don't you think that like at least from my perspective, being a coach, I consider myself a coach more than a mentor because I charge for my services. I, that's kind of my demarcation line. And um, so the way I would differentiate it is the difference between therapy and coaching is in therapy, it's theoretical. In, in coaching, the, the coach, well, if you've hired, if you've hired a, the right coach for you, the coach has been there, done that. Yeah. Right. And they're drawing from, from yeah. their experiences. Where and, you, as, oh. as a coach, where are you trying to um, get people to? Uh, to their own consciousness. At least for me as a coach, yeah. it's to have my clients come into alignment with their own higher self where the ego comes into alignment with the higher self or or the conscious mind comes into alignment with the unconscious mind and the super conscious that it's like the word i use all the time is is it's an alignment yeah, so yeah. the rest of the stuff is just detail it's just experiences it's it's the um and sometimes the English language just lacks the words to express yeah. what, what's running through me. But, um, and I get these downloads of like multiple streams of, of things to say. And, you know, I can't always get them all out. No. out of so you're, you're very involved with preparing people for, for, for what's coming up for them, for get, getting them ready um, for the future. I, I'm very involved in their... Uh, process of alignment with themselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a tendency to avoid making it about their circumstances yeah. or making it about 
their physical, like environmental experiences, although those are the expression of what's going on in terms of their consciousness. You know, I work with companies, I help companies scale up and yeah. I do it from a very different place. So most consultants or coaches go in and it's like, all right, let's lay out the spreadsheets and let's get out the strategic plan. Yeah. And like, let's do all the left brain stuff that has you completely disconnected from your higher self. And I do it the other way where I go in and go, okay, let's look at the results you're getting. Let's look at where you want to go. What's the gap that's in between and what do we need to do around your consciousness? Cause our consciousness, who we are being with ourselves is yep. what creates all of the experiences that we have in our lives. Yep. And so if this is what's going on in a company, yep. then that tells me all about the consciousness of the leadership of the organization. Yep. So I start with them there. Yeah. So and then, where, where yeah, the difference is very much oh. so where right? the difference is very much between between us. Because I mean as as a mentor, I, I charge people for my services for my time. I, you know, that's, I, I, that's, that, that's one, one, of, one of the things that I, I do as well. And so, so I don't see that as a demarcation. Where actually I see the demarcation is that I spend a lot more time focusing on where they are now. How are you feeling now? What's happening in um, your head now? Um, yeah. Whereas what you're describing is, is, is helping people to understand where their head needs to be in order to achieve what they want to achieve. You know, that and is so... so that's that's so cool. Uh, sorry to cut you off. Finish your thought. Yeah. Sorry, no, no, no. So, so that that really does feel like like difference between what we're talking about is yeah. Um, yeah. I'm I'm dealing with the now. You're dealing with the future. Yeah. Well. Yes. Um, because the way I look at so let me can you, let me just like pause that thought for a moment and just kind of back up because this conversation yeah. <laughs> this conversation reminds me so much of my early days. Uh, when I went through the my neuro linguistic programming certification, and yeah. got to understand like where does you know what's the what's the background behind the NLP toolbox, and it was a combination of um, you know Milton Erickson and Virginia Satir, and so Virginia Satir is famous for the family therapy model, yeah. and bringing that into the therapeutic world, and so. Both of them were absolutely successful in their own right, and both of them had completely different approaches to therapy. Where um, Milton Erickson's claim to fame was to get the client to chunk up the problem in bigger, like more meta, like more macrocosm concepts to the point where the problem just popped and disappeared. Virginia Satir got the client to chunk down the problem into more and more specificity till finally the problem just disappeared. It lost its charge. And that's kind of what you and I are saying. So you're focusing on the now and I'm not focusing on where they want to be. And the reason I do that, and both are right, you know, both like Milton Erickson and Virginia Satir were very, very successful, got amazing results with their clients. And People came from all over the world to see them because of the phenomenal results that they got. And so, and the same is for, for you and I, like your focus on the now gets incredible results with your clients and my focus on where they want to be and then reverse engineering it back to now gets incredible results. And so this is a beautiful point to make is that there's, we're moving so quickly out of the black, white thinking. Yeah. Into more gray, like malleability, like the potential is everywhere. And when you get out of that strict either or this or that, black or white, can only be this way or that way, when you get out of that mentality, it's like Absolutely. You know, the open, right? Absolutely. Too right. Too right. Now yeah. I've just noticed. I've just I've just looked down. I have just noticed the time, and I know that we were both very keen um, to make these about fifteen minutes long, and we have just reached the fifteen minute mark. I think they're already. Yeah. All right, I got it. So this is a really good introduction, and I just if I can just say, um, like one last comment on that, and that is that 
just the words, you know, there's, and you and I are going to talk about this a lot. And I know that, that the power of the words, like the, your reality is created in the words that you think and use. And so with that said, without going into that deeply, I just want to play on that in terms of the title of this series, the journey, journey, not end goal. Okay. The okay. journey, right. Of the mastery, not master, mastery mm -hmm. of your mind. And so um, that's what we're doing. We're taking you on a journey of the mastery of your mind. And for this embodiment, you know, for Richard, you looking like Richard and Deborah, me looking like Deborah, we will evolve our consciousness and then maybe we'll come back in another another embodiment and have a different dialogue down the road, but this is what it is for now. It's, it's a journey. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. I hope you all love this. Please. Thank you so much for um, liking and sharing and subscribing to this podcast and we're getting it out to your tribe and, and bringing it out to the world because I can imagine back, before I understood this information, how I used to struggle and how I used to say to myself, like, why can't I get things to change? Or why are things the way they are? Or like, I just don't know what to do to make it better. And so if there's one little thing that you and I discuss that shifts someone in their life, then we've done it. We've done we've it. it. Yeah, high five. Yeah. <laughs> so thank I you. Could, Anything you want to say before we sign off? No, I want to say thank you very much, and we will see you very soon. Yes, we will. Have a blessed day, everyone. Take care. Go to nei-mind.com and sign up today to receive updates from Deborah and upcoming live events where Deborah's speaking, coaching, and training.